Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to take another look at Design Spark Mechanical, take a little bit of a chunk out of the pull tool. Pull tool basics coming up. Stay tuned. So for this little project, we're just going to head straight over to the computer. I'll see you over there. So in our last episode, which was a while ago, um, I'll link it up at the top there so you can check it out. We looked at some very basic drawing tools where we drew uh, some random shapes, which, you know, if you were drawing a real drawing, you would um, use it to draw specific shapes that you needed for your project. So this is where we get caught up with our last project, our last session, where we're going to just pull these up to certain heights. And you can type that in, or you can just pull it as far as you want. I usually like to type it in. You can grab certain parts and you can delete them if you just want to leave that as a hole in the object. But right now we're going to do a couple of other things with this. We're going to pull these up at various heights and then I'm going to show you some pull tool basics. So there we have various height designs, various height shapes. Now one of the most basic things that the pull tool can do besides pulling two-dimensional um, surfaces into three-dimensional shapes is you can actually grab an edge of an object and the pull tool then pops up this little pop-up window right here that allows you to put a rounded corner on that or a chamfered corner on there, which is a straight bevel. It allows you to extrude the edge or to copy the edge or to pivot the edge, which is what we're going to show right now. So if I wanted to start with a rounded edge on this one, I can actually just pull that in to a round and I can leave it as a rounded edge like that, or I could even pull it all the way in to where the flat surface disappears and I end up with a fully domed shape right there. Okay, you can do that on just about any object. However, when you get to thinner objects like this one, it really can't make a round, go around that edge, that corner right there. So that's not going to do us any good on that one. On this one, if we wanted to select the entire, all five sides of this pentagon, we would double click. It selects all five sides of that. And I could actually round those by pulling them this way. Or if I didn't want to do that, I can go over here, which is instead of the pop-up, I can go over here and adjust those design issues. So I go over here. And instead of putting a round on there, I can put a bevel on there. And I can set the bevel to any design size I want. And then notice once I've got a bevel, now I've got three handles. So this one's going to take the, the whole bevel in and out like I just did. But this one is going to increase the angle of the bevel this direction. Okay. And then this one is going to increase or decrease the angle of the bevel in this direction, which it actually just thinks I clicked on that. So I'll, so I can increase or decrease the angle of the bevel in this direction. So you don't have to just live with a 45 degree uh, bevel, which or 45 degree chamfer, which is awesome. Okay, so that's rounding it, that's beveling it. You can do that on most objects. Another thing that I can do with my pull tool, let's say I want this edge. So I double click that edge. Now, if this isn't the edge you want, like if I really wanted this edge down here and I double click again, the second time it will go the other direction. So if I, you don't get the one you want the first time and just double click again, and it will try one more time. Okay. So Let's try this pivot edge now. So this just gives me a double handle right here. And since I've got edges on the end of a plane right here, I can actually grab that 
and pull that into the middle and I can pull all of those either in or out. I can bevel them either direction. So it's grabbing all of those and beveling all of those a certain distance. And once again, I can still just type in the distance that I want those beveled. So now I have that hexagon beveled that direction. Okay. Now, um, the last two here are extrude edge. So let's grab this angled or this, let's grab this hexagon edge and I'm going to copy this edge and notice it gives me, once I put the copy edge on, it gives me two handles. Okay. So if I wanted to make a hexagon inside this hexagon, I could grab this handle and pull it in this way. And what actually, so I could make a, I could pull that in two millimeters and now I could make a hexagon within a hexagon. And then this one I could pull to punch a hole or uh, I can hit undo and I can pull that to pull it out. Okay, that's copy the edge. If I wanted to extrude the edge, let's say I try this edge right here. Okay, and instead of copying, I can extrude it. So instead of just moving the edge this time, it'll actually create planes. Now each one of those is an individual plane. So I just extruded that edge up. Okay, so that's a little bit, it's still some basic pull tool stuff, but, um, but that'll get you started on some designing. The only other thing I wanted to show you in this quick video is if I wanted this surface right here, let's say, to be exactly the same height as that surface right there. See how right now they're different heights. If I want it to be exactly the same height, there's this tool right here. This is the up to tool. And you can find this up to tool in both the pull tool and in the move tool. Works pretty good. So if I click this surface with just a regular pull, no selections over here, and then I click up to right there. And then I can click on any one of these surfaces that are, that are the same direction. And even maybe even a line, if I wanted to just go up to the, to the height of a line, because remember this is going to go either straight up or straight down. I can extrude this up to the level of that. And so now if you look at this from the side, you'll see that those two are straight on. In fact, I'll just set up a quick design. And you can see that those are right above that millimeter mark. So that actually set those up to be on exactly the same plane. If I check it this way, you can see that I have the use on this plane same plane I can I can use these corners or I can manipulate these corners so that is a pretty quick pretty easy pretty down and dirty those are some more functions of the pool tool that are still fairly basic okay we haven't got into anything real fancy here yet but there you go some more functions of the pool tool design spark mechanical well, that's about it for Design Sparks Pool Tool Basics. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe down below, leave us a comment, give us a like. We'll see you out there. Mm -hmm.